Welcome to The Social Regressive. In a previous video, we took a look at the newly announced 224 Valkyrie from Federal, and we compared and contrasted it with its natural competitors, the 223 Remington and the 22 Nosler. And one that we did not discuss was 22250 Remington, one of the most ubiquitous Uber 223s out there. This is definitely going to have a much greater case capacity than any of the other cases that we've mentioned, and it's going to get those bullets moving extremely fast, much faster than you can get with any of the others. But the plot does thicken a little bit because you can't just draw you know, one down and say that one is better than the other. You have to take a look at a handful of factors. The first thing to take a look at is the fact that 22250 Remington will not fit into one of these. And that is one of the, the special things about uh, 224 Valkyrie and the others. They are specifically designed to work within the magazine limitations that you get on an AR-15. And uh, really with 22250, uh, you are kind of precluded from this platform. If you want to get into a semi-auto, some kind of, uh, you know, especially AR base platform, you have to really step things up and you end up with an AR-10 just because the case is so long it's just uh, just the tiniest bit too long and the uh, the head diameter is the same as a 308 473 thousandths instead of uh, like the uh, the 378 you get here and the 420 that you're going to get on uh, 224 valkyrie so those are they're designed from you know case length and diameter they're designed to work within this thing which makes them pretty special but what if we assume a different platform, like a bolt action rifle, where the magazine lengths are going to be much longer, you don't have to worry about your case length, and your head diameter can be anything, including the 473 thousandths, which is a very, very common bolt head. Is 22250 just the clear winner, and 224 Valkyrie is something you don't want to put in a bolt action rifle? I would say no. The two are very, very different. 22250, what you have to do when you're looking at two different uh, cartridges is you have to look at the initial bullet selection that's out there. For 22250, the initial bullet that it was kind of designed around is a very lightweight bullet moving very, very fast. So you're looking at like a 45 grain bullet and maybe on the heavy end down into the low 60s. That's about the uh, the largest bullet that you can get in a 22250 typically without it tumbling all over the place. And that's because from the factory, assuming that 45 grain bullet, uh, most of these guys are going to be selecting a twist rate of 1 in 12 inches, and you're going to have a very short jump into the lands. It's really just not designed around a heavy bullet, whereas 224 Valkyrie is. You're going to be looking at rifles with, say, a 1 in 7 twist, and they're going to have a longer jump into the lands so that you can get those bigger, heavier bullets. 224 Valkyrie is designed around a 90 grain SMK. It's, that seems to be the, uh, the initial offering. That seems to be the, uh, the kind of middle of the road bullet. There's gonna be some that are heavier, including 100 grain uh, hunting bullets. And this is just initially out of the gate. We'll see a little bit later how things go. Uh, so what you're gonna be dealing with is you know, a, a fast light bullet out of 22250, and you're going to be dealing with a slower, heavier, uh, bullet out of 224 Valkyrie. And we'll see what the ballistics are like on these two. Light bullets moving quickly, heavy bullets moving slowly. It seems like they should kind of meet in the middle and the two trajectories should be somewhat similar. But as you can see from this chart that they are not at all. So what I'm comparing here is the 2700 foot per second uh, 224 Valkyrie and that's a 90 grain SMK bullet. So that's Federal's kind of initial offering. And we're comparing that against another Federal load, which is a 55 grain pointed bullet out of 22,250. So that's kind of heavy for caliber. So I tried to get a little bit more of that apples to apples comparison, um, but just because of bullet weights, we really can't. Uh, the one is almost double the weight of the other. But as you can see from this curve here, the 22,250, it moves out much faster and that initial trajectory is extremely flat. If you had to try to take a shot at an unknown distance at a small target, your odds of hitting it are very high with this one. But you can see that it's going to get subsonic long before it reaches a thousand yards, and it essentially gets swatted out of the sky after that. The 224 Valkyrie load won't have that crazy flat trajectory, but it will remain supersonic past 1300 yards. 
and the difference in drop is going to be over 150 inches. Velocity and drop only tell half the story though. I consider the wind to be my number one obstacle to accurate shot placement, and the two cartridges just don't really compare at all. Just before going transonic at 850 yards, the, the 22250 drifted over 102 inches in a 10 mile per hour crosswind. At that range, the 224 Valkyrie drifted nearly half that at about 55 inches. And that for me is a game changer. And that difference in windage applies to basically the whole trajectory. You're still gonna be running about half the amount of wind through this whole curve. Now there is one last scenario to consider. What if you have a barrel cut to your specifications where you get a higher twist rate and you get a longer jump into the lands and you still use that 22250 case? Can you get basically the best of both worlds? And yeah, you really can. You can get a barrel cut to your own specific dimensions and you can even get a you know, like a 22250 actually improved sort of case where you get the sharper shoulder and all that. So you get even a little bit more case capacity. Uh, but yes, that is going to be your own special thing. You're not going to be able to buy ammunition off the shelf and run it, and you're not going to be able to get that sort of thing cut from the factory. That's something that you're going to have to go to a specialty barrel maker to make that happen. So in general, no, you can't really get uh, best of both worlds with that one. That's going to be your pet project. And again, if you're getting into AR platforms, you're still going to be running an AR-10, not an AR-15. So despite any initial appearances of similarity between the two cartridges, I do see them as being very distinct and accomplishing very different purposes, and you're just going to have to determine what your purpose is before you purchase a rifle. Uh, I don't see this as being a case where we're comparing apples to lesser apples. What we're doing is we're comparing a dragster to an F1 car. The two on the surface are fast race cars but they're going to accomplish very different purposes and they're going to do them in different ways. 22250 Remington is one that is just a very, it's an inherently very accurate cartridge and it's one of my very favorites. It's super fun to hand load for and you know, having those screaming bullets coming out of there where you don't really have to worry about drop so much within your you know, kind of close range distances, uh, it's a very, very fun cartridge to shoot. And like I say, one of my favorites. Uh, but this is one that I'm going to consider for kind of shorter to mid-range targets. Once it gets outside maybe 600 yards, uh, this is one where I'm probably going to want to step over to that 224 Valkyrie just because you're going to get so much less wind drift, which is one of the most important things for me, and the drop as you get further and further out, uh, it's going to become you know, a less of a big deal, whereas the, uh, the lighter bullets from 22250 are going to drop real fast. And remember that the ballistics that we put together here today, that little ballistics chart, that was showing one of the heavier bullets for 22250, a 55 grain bullet. Uh, if this were a 45, the difference would be much more pronounced. So before you go and you know pick which cartridge and which gun, just consider some of those limitations. You're going to have limitations of platform, and you're going to have uh, limitations on ballistics and how the two operate. So yeah, it's just going to be up to you to decide. Here's a bonus for you guys that stayed to the end of this video. You see this rifle right here with the stickers still on it? That's a Savage 12 FV. I know a whole bunch of you guys bought these things back in September when they went on crazy good sale. And yeah, I bought one too. This thing ended up costing me about 217 bucks or something like that, which is just phenomenal. And I'm gonna be doing a build series on this. You remember I did um, a review of my old Savage 12 FV, my favorite rifle. Uh, the one with all the camo and the funky stock and all that. Well, we're going to be doing a build with this. It's not going to be as complicated as that Axis build, just because there is going to be much less to fix. Uh, this rifle should be just squared away right out of the box right here, and it should be very, very accurate. But what I want you to do is guess what cartridge I had this thing chambered for. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.